What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today we have uh, something a little different for y'all. We're going to talk about the five things we hate about our bass boat after a year of ownership. This episode is sponsored by Opinion Outpost. Oh gosh, what's going on with this one? All right, y'all, I know the title sounds a little harsh. I don't know if it's necessarily five things we hate about the boat or maybe one or two things that we really hate about the boat with a couple other things mixed in that we found over our year of ownership that could definitely benefit you as a new boat purchaser yourself. So hopefully we can also get y'all to chime in with your boat brand below and maybe a couple things that you dislike about it so people have a very educational buyer's guide to look through in the comments section. Now, with that being said, we're gonna talk to you guys about these first few items. We're gonna break things down from what we see as the least important of the issues issues all the way up to the worst issue, which could cost you tens of thousands of dollars. People can literally steal anything they want out of your boat, and it is unfortunate. Hopefully we just got some sort of a one-off lemon where it only affected this boat, but we'll tell you more about it before the videos end. But first, a message from today's sponsor. So Opinion Outpost is a website that you can log on to on your computer or mobile device, and you can literally earn cash rewards for your opinion on different products and services to go towards things like cash directly to your PayPal or on gift cards. You can be making money while you're watching Netflix, up at night and can't sleep, waiting for your friends, literally anywhere. We recently signed up ourselves and I plan on using any rewards towards Amazon gift cards. It's an easy option for me because there's a lot of my favorite fishing gear on Amazon, of course, and I think a lot of y'all will find value in it as well, but there's so many options to choose from. But I'm sure y'all could find an easy excuse to earn some extra cash towards restaurants, clothes, Guggen and Swagger, whatever you want. So y'all check the link in the description to sign up for free and start getting paid cash rewards for your opinions. We'd like to thank Opinion Outpost for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back into the action. All right, y'all, so to start things off, we're gonna talk about the strap system on the front of our boat, which is actually an aftermarket one that you can find in the description because you might want an extra. The reason being, ours snapped as we were loading the boat one time, fishing out in East Texas, and we literally had to make a three hour drive home using just the safety strap. So I think this is important to bring up. The strap literally broke as Devin was cranking our boat up. I've never even seen this happen to anybody. That definitely makes me doubt this uh, strap system. I didn't know that was a thing. So this is simply something to bring to y'all's attention. Go ahead and grab you an extra strap. You're not gonna have to replace the whole assembly, but you wanna make sure you've got a backup in case this happens to you on the water. So all in all, just have a spare strap with you in case this were to ever arise. It's not a brand specific issue. This is gonna happen at some point in time, most likely. So you gotta have a spare. That wraps up number five. Let's go ahead and move on. All right, y'all, the back of the boat. Number four on the list here is the motor support. You might be able to tell our motor is a little crooked right now and you want it to always be straight to not affect your steering, your trim, things of that nature. Well, our motor support has broken. Come on in here and join me and take a look. So the motor support has actually snapped right here off to the side, which now allows the motor to shift. And especially when we're driving, it just decides it wants to go to the right quite often. It's not good for your trim. You don't want your motor bouncing around. You can even see the motor support is off the center of the grommet. It's normally supposed to be locked in dead center on. So this goes to number four on the list because you are gonna need to make sure you've got a strong motor support. There are aftermarket options. I'll try and throw some examples up online or on screen where you can see they actually use pins to lock into these holes right here and it's a much stronger aftermarket system that you can utilize. We need to go ahead and grab one for ourselves because this guy right here, which is a 60 to to $100 replacement part, we fear is just gonna end up cracking and breaking a second or third time and we're just gonna be continuously buying these cheaper motor supports. You're paying a lot of money for the motor on these boats. You would hate for something to go wrong because it's just getting jarred as you're traveling down the highway, etc. So that was number four. We're now back at the front of the boat for number three on the list and it only gets worse and worse as we progress. So hold tight and please don't be afraid to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new here and love the bass fishing and outdoors content. This is the hot tamale, which y'all have helped name, but we also have the kayaks. Yeah. We have the John boat. It's absolutely crazy, y'all. We bank fish still. And my wife and I, who's behind the camera, would love to have y'all along for the ride as we work towards 100,000 subscribers. So thank you guys in advance. Let's go ahead and talk about number three, which you might be able to notice uh, has something to do with the trolling motor. Now again, not brand specific, but this is an issue that you might run into. And I believe it's just because of the size of our boat. We have an 18 foot, eight inch boat. This is the Ranger RT 188P, by the way, if I haven't specified up to this point. So it is the trolling motor and where it's positioned. You'll notice it's positioned a little off the front of the boat. Now that probably isn't the biggest issue ever, right? And I think it's probably the optimal position for that trolling motor. And I don't think we would have changed our minds on going with the Garmin Force or something else because of this. But here's what happens. When we're going to launch the boat and we're backing off the trailer, a lot of times the trolling motor hits the rubber grommet as it comes off the trailer and goes into the water. It 
and you know that's not good for the trolling motor and I feel like one day it's just going to decide it wants to pop right off the boat and there's not a whole lot we can do about it. It's just kind of depending on how steep the ramp is and how slow we're backing into the water as to whether it's going to bash against the front of the trailer or not. And you can even see there's like some chunks out of the rubber grommet over here because of the trolling motor. So this is just something to look out for. I don't know if the trolling motor, like I say, could be mounted a little bit further back because I assume that at the shop that installed it, they know the proper positioning. But I think it's just the fact that we have that shorter boat. It's not a full size 21 foot bass boat. And so with that being said, maybe that lack of space is why it's mounted in this position, but it's just something to think about. Maybe it's something to mention when it is mounted because maybe there is the option of having it a little further back and it's something I'm aware of. I'd love your comments down below. Let's go to number two now and this is where things get spicy. All right, y'all, so number two on the list, we're closing in and I know you all spend a lot of money on your electronics. So let me tell you what is our issue at number two. It doesn't happen with the unit up front because we have a mount on the front end that's designed a little bit differently and it really locks this guy into place. But our center console unit, which has a different mounting bracket, you'll notice what happens is when we place that screen on there, it just snaps into place. We've been driving down the road and on two separate occasions, we've looked back and this screen is nowhere to be found. <laughs> we do not see it in the rear view. So of course we pull off to the side of the road and where is it? It's down here on the floor, sliding around, getting banged up. This could be a $1,000 unit. It could be a $2,000 unit. It could be a couple hundred bucks. We all have different units mounted on here, but the thing you need to look out for is the mount that you're using. This is a Garmin branded mount. And unfortunately with this mount right here, it uh, decides every once in a while it wants to pop off. And originally I thought maybe it was because we were traveling down the road with the boat covered because it came off one time when the cover was on the boat so I thought maybe the cover put pressure on this release button and then it decided to come off well then we had it driving down the road without the cover it was snapped firmly in place and all of a sudden it's down there on the floor again so just be very careful with the mounts that you get because what happened to us most recently and this was pretty crazy we were running 45 miles an hour across Lake Austin and mid sprint the screen flies off and falls down onto the steering column You gotta be kidding me. Save the clip. Nice mount. How lame. This has fallen off while we've driven before too. And imagine if I was like cutting a left turn or we were kind of in a little bit of a, a choppy scenario and all of a sudden the screen just comes up and smacks me in the face and I pass out. Or it goes off the side of the boat into the water. Or even when we were just driving down the road it decides it wants to fly out onto the road. I mean this is... It's not just the expense, but also your waypoints and things that you possibly couldn't retrieve from your units. It's really unfortunate because a lot of folks just leave their electronics mounted on their boat. And I have heard if you're just connecting and disconnecting them all the time, the electronics might not last as long. I'd love your comments down below on that subject because you know, you're just, you're wearing out that connection potentially. Obviously, if you don't want your screen stolen, you're going to take them off overnight when you're traveling, things of that nature, but there's no sense in just taking them on and off probably every time you launch your boat, but we do because we're worried we're just going to simply lose one of our screens. So just be very selective and cautious when selecting your mounting brackets for your electronics because we know how expensive they can get. Make sure you talk with the folks who are installing them for you if you're not installing them yourself, and hopefully you can avoid the issue that we've had, which is almost losing our screens. Could happen at any point in time in the future, so... That's uh, issue number two on the list. Here goes the grand finale. All right, y'all, I imagine you've made it this far and you're wondering what could possibly be the number one issue that we absolutely hate about this boat. And this is really unfortunate because it's one of the safety features we were excited about. We heard a lot of aluminum boats, or I should say a handful of aluminum boats out there don't come with this safety feature, which is locking compartments, and this one does. So number one on the list is the fact that somebody could literally steal your thousands or tens of thousands of dollars even in gear from your boat at any point point in time, let me explain. So you've got your compartments, you lift up, you turn the handle, and now you can open it. If this is not turned, you can't open it. And you can lock it in that position so that nobody can open it. Well, let me lock this real quick. It's now locked, so this will no longer twist, right? So I'm not able to open it. But you can just grab this whole plastic assembly and rotate it. Look at this, it rotates and now I can open it. It's locked right now. Imagine if this was your vehicle. Imagine if this was your house and you're just inviting burglars in because your locks don't work. That's a little ridiculous. And again, I'm hoping this is just a one-off incident and maybe whoever put this boat together just decided I'm not gonna put the sealant on this one. <laughs> and Maybe they missed that on the assembly line. I have no clue, but you can literally just turn these plastic pieces 
and open up these compartments. This could be all of your tackle, all of your protection gear, all of your rods and reels, you name it. Whatever you store on the boat. Sometimes we have a lot of uh, money and camera equipment, right? We're filming these YouTube videos. And if we had the ability to just leave these things locked, we would feel very comfortable leaving the stuff on the boat, even potentially overnight where now we don't. So it's come to the point where maybe Devin and I are traveling and we're staying at a hotel filming videos at a state even sometimes. And we could just leave the boat locked up with all our gear inside. Well, we don't because we know what can happen with this. And so we take everything out. We take all of our plastics out. We make like five trips into the hotel room with all of our rods and all of our reels might be up on the third floor because we know stuff could just get simply stolen out of here if people try and open these. I'm going to unlock it and show you how you can actually prevent this from happening. And it is, well, I should open it first. <laughs> this rotational piece on the inside here, which is plastic, and I'm thinking it's just because this is all plastic and maybe we could just do a little super glue fix. Who knows? Definitely going to be taking it into a shop about this and seeing if we can get it fixed though. If you tighten this down on the underside, which is kind of difficult to do, you can't get like a wrench and really crank it. Then it becomes harder and harder to twist that plastic piece to rotate and get these open. But it's not just this compartment. So this is our largest storage unit right here. This fits up to eight foot rods and we love that about the boat, but you can just open it up if you want. Same thing with the back hatch there. We've tested it. You can open that thing right up and you can get to all the batteries, all of the cables connecting the boat. It's just it's a little ridiculous. This is unlocked. You can open the rod storage. We keep a lot of stuff in here. We keep tackle. We keep the net camera gear in here that now we've got to remove every time we go somewhere because when I lock it, now this won't twist. But if you just grab it and turn it, you can open it right up. So hopefully y'all can not only share your frustration with this, but maybe share some insights as to how we can fix it. I'm sure it's just something like a little Loctite. Maybe you've just got to disassemble it. It's just a shame it happens from the factory. I don't know if it's because of the Texas changing weather. I don't feel like that's a good enough excuse, but maybe, you know, with the hot and the cold, it kind of loosens itself up over time. It's plastic though, so it's kind of just tough to say. I would love to just feel safe and secure with all of our valuables on the boat locked up. Devin just brought up a good point. It is pretty funny, but the center console, which could have most of your valuables in it, your cell phones, your wallets or something, just on any given moment, and maybe you uh, dock your boat for a moment while you go to grab the truck and you left your valuables in there. This one actually seems to stay locked really well. So I don't know what it is. I think it's because it's built in onto this harder plastic console. This one seems locked. So kudos to Ranger on that. That one because that one stays shut. <laughs> that is all we've got for you on this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it and really hope you got some value out of it. Please let us know down in the comments. If you would also like us to film something like uh, the top five things we love about the boat, maybe top 10 things. There's a lot of things we love about this boat and it has been better to us than we deserve. So we are very appreciative. It's just a few things that we've uh, ran into and whether you think these are minor or extensive, voice that opinion down in the comments below as well. Again, we really want this to be more of a buyer's guide for folks looking into making their first purchase purchase as this was our first purchase a year ago and we had a lot of questions and watching a video like this could have really helped us out. We would also love to thank Opinion Outpost for sponsoring today's episode. It's because of awesome folks like them that we're able to make these videos for you guys so we really appreciate it. Go ahead and sign up for free with the link in the description and start earning cash for your reviews online and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.